Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to make a Christmas ornament using FreeCAD and using something called a compound workflow. Our aim is to create an STL or a step file with the individual parts connected together so we can just print this all in one go and just take it off the printer and it will be a flexible tree ornament that we can hang on our Christmas tree for this time of year. If I hide this, so this is a step file that I've output from our model and look at the individual parts. We've created a workflow from base features. So if I show all these and each of these are different bodies in the part design, if we look at the very first part of each of these, it starts with a base feature. So these here are base features. These base features, if I show them, press the spacebar, you can see we've got basically this base feature here, press the spacebar on this one, this base feature here, don't worry about a circle here, that's a sketch. And this one here, click on the base feature, press the spacebar, they look like sketches and they are, but they come from one single sketch. If I go to the topmost and look at this sketch here, double click it, this is the sketch we've created. So we create one single sketch and use something called a compound workflow to split this out and create the individual parts in the part design. This is combining a part workflow with a part design workflow in a safe manner. It makes for a very quick workflow and we're gonna venture into that in this video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. Normally if I was using something like the part design, which I'm going to be using for this object, is that if I create a body and then create a sketch along the XY plane, I'll create a number of sketches for each of the parts. So I would say come in here and create my star like so. Let's quickly add some trimming in here to trim this off. And I'll constrain this down, etc. And then, well, we've got our stars, so we pad this up to whatever size we want. Let's keep the 10 millimeters, work on the star. Then we've got the first body, and then we'll create the next body, hide in that star. And let's show the axis cross, create a new sketch along the XY plane, and then take a reference to where our star would be like so, and figure out the length here, and incorporate this in from when we're doing the rest of the tree. So we had this here, and we'll come in and make sure the star's in here, fits in here in a slot nicely, etc., etc. That takes a lot of planning going back and forth to the original object, figuring out where it is, cutting out parts of the object. If this was positioned differently, say we was positioning this, and say we would decided to have all our centers of origin, all our pivot points are here, then we would have to do calculations of where all the cutouts are going to be, et cetera, et cetera. It's much easier to have something like this and then visualize it with our pieces down here. So we can model like this and then pull in geometry Let's say pull in geometry from this star, import it into here, take the cutouts, etc. etc. We're going to do it a different way. We're going to do it a quicker way and a much easier way. So I'm going to get rid of the body and we're going to use a master sketch and use base features. So I'm not going to start in the part design, I'm going to actually start in the sketcher. And we're going to create a new sketch along the XY plane and hit OK. Let's create the star. So if we come in here, 
we would have, say, this hexagonal tool showing. So if we drop that down, we've got the perfect triangle tool there to start our star. And let's go that midpoint there. I've got, if I come over to the left-hand side here, the constraints, if we open this up, we have this drop down here. I've got the auto constraints on and the auto remove redundant constraints. So I'm gonna bring my star in and place it there. And I've auto constrained to the center for coincident constraint. And we've got a nice circular constraint here that I can place in some diameter. And we'll set this to 20 millimeters. Controls I'm using down the bottom. I'm currently using the touchpad controls and whatever controls you're using along here, you can hover over those and see what the shortcuts are, the zoom, rotate, select, etc. Touchpad can also be used with mouse, but it's great for laptop, which I'm on at the moment. So we've got the triangle and I'm gonna put another triangle in, hover over the center point, come out and bring this around, connecting up to this line here, point on object constraint. I'm gonna hit escape to get the mouse pointer back, then use this point and this circle and use the point on object constraint. It's all fully constrained now, but I'm just going to be modeling one side. So I basically want to use the trim tool, this tool here, trim edge, and remove all of this. So these here, this line, and I wanna be careful because I need a line down here in a moment. So let's take away this circle here. Now, if I hover over, you can see that these green circles appear. And this is what we're going to trim to. So if I take that away, it's trimmed all the way around there. Let's trim that one as well. Remember there's two circles under here. And that's from both of these triangles that have been laid down. And these are construction geometry. So I'm just removing those. So if I hover over this one now, you can see we've got a green circle here, and this is where it will trim to. So I'm not going to touch that one just yet and get rid of this one and this one. And that's coming here. Let's get rid of this one here and this one. And actually we can get rid of that one and can get rid of this one as well. So we've got this shape in here. Now I'm gonna hit the escape key so taking this arc, and I know there's two arcs in here because there was two construction geometries. I'm gonna hit delete. That arc has been removed and I've got another arc here, this arc here. And I can change that to construction geometry. I see I've got a point on object constraint here. So that's connected to that one. Control Z that. And this one here and this arc need to be connected point on object constraint. And that looks like it's all connected up. Now I need a line from here down to here. We've got that going through there. I'm gonna hit escape and put some diameter on this circle here, or this arc. Using the diameter constraint, 20 millimeters, let's okay that. So we've got the arc. At the moment, it can move. So you can see it can move. So we're gonna pull it to the side and I can see that this point here isn't connected to this point. So I'm gonna hit Control and Z to undo on the keyboard. And I'm gonna highlight those two points using a drag selection around those and use the coincident constraint. Now, when I move this, it can move up and down. So you can see we've got this point not constrained here. Let's hit Control Z and let's highlight that point which will highlight this point and probably take some other geometry as well. So we look down, it's only got this point for this arc here, which is good. That's fine. And use a coincident constraint. Now you can see this has gone green and this arc has gone light blue. So we're fully constrained on those two geometries there. And now we've got to constrain these up. So I'm gonna control Z that. First of all, we've got to keep these in line. So this line and this line, horizontal constraint. And this point and this point, they need to be in vertical alignment. And these two will have to be as well. So I'm gonna control Z. So this point and this one, vertically aligned. 
And now it's a case of a look at this. We can see that we have movement around here. Let's control Z that. And I'm going to take all of these, select them all. I'm not control selecting them. I'm just clicking on them. It's a hungry selection, so they're added to selection. I'm going to make those equal. We have a redundant constraint. It's got an orange. So you can see we've got a redundant constraint of 23. If I click that, that's this one here. So I can delete that redundant constraint. Now, if I move these, these will all keep the same size. So I can even change the style of my style. Let's control Z. And I'm going to set a length in here, this length here. Just going to set a length against that. That fully constrains it and just hit OK for the length. So we're fully constrained and everything's fine. What we want to watch is the arc. If we look to the left and we have two arcs in here, then this is going to cause us a problem. So we need to delete that arc and constrain against this arc with the point on object constraints against the arcs. The radius or the diameter of tw diameter of 20 millimeters and the coincident constraint in the center. So we have our first sketch. I'm not going to exit the sketch. I'm going to sketch in the next part within the same sketch. And then we're going to split those apart to accommodate our part design workflow. As we know, if we've got separate bodies, then we create a multi-body object and part design doesn't allow us to do that. But we can get away with doing this in a single sketch with one step that will fix this problem. So we've got the star. Let's create the first part of our tree, which is going to be basically a triangle, but we're going to take into account this section here. I'm going to use a polyline. So if I look along this tool here, the create polyline, and what I'm going to do is come out this way. So I've clicked close to this point here, and I'm going to come out, and we're going to make basically a triangle. And I'm going to connect up with the vertical axis. I'm going to come up and stop about here. And I'm going to connect up with this one. So we've got those in there. I'm going to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back. And I'm going to take this line here and this one of the star and use the constraint parallel. So that keeps them parallel. And I'm going to take this point and this point and I'm making a gap in here. So the gap's going to be 0 0.5 of a millimetre. We've got that there. And what I'm also going to do is bring these two together. So this point and this point in vertical alignment. So you can see that one's constrained down. This is the gap in to allow this to move when we finally print this as a single part. So we've got that. Let's decide how long we want this. Well, first of all, I'm going to add something in here that our next part of the tree will connect to. So I'm going to take a slot out of here. So let's use the polyline again. So not the B spline, the polyline. Connect up to this length, come up and come across like so. And hit escape. Come over and use the trim tool, trim edge. And we're going to remove this edge and this edge. So now we've got this section in here and hit escape. That sets some height between this point and this top point. And do I want it there or here? Let's go for this one here and place a height in here. At the moment, it's 17 millimeters. Let's go for 30 mil. That's there. And this length here is going to be 10, right, 10 millimeters. And this length here, we'll make that five millimeters. So we've got this slot in here. And also, let's set this length. So I'm going to take, let's pull these out this way so we can see them. And we'll bring this one down here. So I'm going to take and this one here has got to be, well, this point here has got to be on this line. Point on object constraint. 
and we'll set some length in here. So this point and this point, the length of 30 millimeters as well. So we've got our first part to the tree. Now we've got all that in there. Let's add the second part. So I may want to come over to the constraints. So we can see the constraints in here. If I click one, this one here, and scroll down, we should see it highlighted. And if I click on the tick on the side, we can hide these constraints. So I can hide that one, and we'll hide this one as well. So let's come down and hide that one as well. Just gets them out of the way. And maybe this one. Let's click on that and hide that one. So we've got this section here, and I'm going to use a polyline. And I'm going to connect up to the vertical axis. Come out, come down, and we'll come across as well. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's come across to here and come down. And we're following this down, and we'll come across again. And this time we'll add in that shape and come all the way up to this point. So that's all connected up on there. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and we'll add in some constraints in here. So I want to keep these two points around about 0 0.5 millimeters away. And we'll come over to here and I'm going to take this point and this point and set a distance from there, 0.5. And the same for this bottom point here, so this one and this one. Distance of 0.5. With this one, I'm going to take these two and keep them parallel. So I'm going to use a line in here. So the line's going to come into here, like so, connecting up these two points. I hit escape, click on that, and make it a construction geometry. So it's blue. Therefore, I can take these three lines and make them parallel. So create a parallel constraint across those. That line keeps that parallel, but that won't show up when we exit the sketch. And now it's a case of figuring out the height that I want. So let's take, well, first of all, let's sort this bit out here, which I know is going to be basically a replica of this one. So this edge and this edge, they should be equal. And this edge and this edge, of well, the other part of the tree need to be equal as well. So we've got that there. And the length, we could say these two could be equal. And we've got that in there like so. Now we'll concentrate on the pot. Again, I'm going to use the polyline. And we'll create something in here. So this is totally up to your design how you want to do this. I'm going to create something like this. Well, this should be straight, really. Let's bring that there. And we'll come down at an angle. Something like that. We'll connect it up. And click on top. Got our constraints in there. Of course, this fits into here. This is going to be the same as this one. Make those equal. And also the length, this length here and this length. Make those equal. Distance away from these two, again, 1.5. Don't have to worry about the distance there. And this looks all good and maybe set these two to be equal, just to reduce the constraints. And let's think about what we want this to look like. Something like that, I'll set height in here. 25, and last of all, well, we need a length. 
So let's set the length along the bottom, bring this out, length along here, and set that one to 10 mil. So we've got basically the tree as one sketch. We'll add chamfering on here with a later operation. So if I come up and hit close, you see we've got this. This actually strews into multiple objects if I was using a part workflow. So I could actually extrude this and they would be separate objects if I split them apart. So you can see that if I come over to the part, and let's see if this is strews properly without any gapping. And okay, you can see, well, they are separate parts. And if I click on that strews, come up to the part and check geometry, and we don't need to run the checks. All we want to do is run a check to find out what it is to shade content. It should be a compound. So each of these are separate parts. So if the extrudes are compounds, so's the sketch. Hit the delete on the keyboard, click on the sketch, press the space bar to bring it back. And you can see that there is a gap between here, which means that this is a compound object. Each of these parts are separate bodies from that strewed. You can see them strewed out into separate bodies. Is if we're in the part workbench, I can come up to part, compound, and well, I've still got the task open. Let's go back to the task. And the reason why we're seeing these all ghosted is because I've still got this check geometry still open. So if I come out and close that, that's closed now. And now I can come up and select the sketch, select the part, that's better, compound, and explode the compound. What we've done, we've got the exploded sketch here. Inside there, we'll see a star, the first part of the tree, the second part, and the part of the pot. So those are all individual parts. Those, if I come over to the part design, and have a look at these. Let's take the star, click on the sketch zero, and create a body. So I've selected the sketch and create a body. That pulls in this sketch as a base feature. You see it's invisible there? We've got a base feature now, which is this part. This base feature can be padded. And see that's successfully padded there. And I'm gonna pad that and we'll set that to five mil. So five millimeter pad. Okay that. They so can see we've got the pad in there from that original sketch. So we've got the pad. I want to place a hole in here. So I'm gonna come around to this side and create a sketch upon this surface here. Create a new sketch. And that's flipped me around this way. Let's get my bearings so I can see what's happened. So we're around this way here. Okay, let's come in, bring this around and start creating a hole in here. So I know this comes up to this point here and I'm gonna create a circle. Something like that. I want it in the center. So let's hit escape. I'm gonna import some geometry. And looking at this, this is extruded upwards. So we'll take this point here, and that's take, actually take this whole line. So I've taken this whole line, pull that in, and we'll create a line from this point to this point. Point on line constraint, let's look to the right, and select that line. I just hit escape to get the mouse pointer back, that line. Make a construction geometry and make sure that this is horizontal. This line controls this circle now. That means that I can take these two points and the one that I want to center and use the symmetrical constraint. Now I can adjust this length to be in the right place. So let's take this length here and set a length in here. Let's go for 2.5 for the time being. We may have to adjust this and let's set a diameter using the diameter. 
and that set that to 2.5 as well. So we're going to create this hole in here. Matter of fact, that set this to 3 mil. So I've got that there. I'm going to close. So we've got the circle. And we're going to pocket that sketch through and out the other side. Let's go through all. So we've got that sitting there. If we look at the sketch, this sketch here, we can see when we extrude this out, we can then create a similar feature on the other side to marry up against this. So we'll create a pad to go through this hole. That's okay that. So we've got one side of our star done. So select that body, right click, rename, and set this to start. That's our first body. We'll mirror that in a moment. Let's move on to the next sketch, this one here, sketch one. So we've selected it and we'll create a body. Base feature has come in, so you can see the base features there and the sketch has disappeared. Again, that's used the pad on that base feature and set this to five millimeters and hit OK. Now what we can do is create this circle inside here. I'm going to use a shape binder. I'm going to pull in this circle from the sketch, not the pad, to create a feature in here to join this up. So I'm going to come up to the other body, this body here for the star. I've, pressed, I've called it start. Let's rename that to start. There we go. And let's have a look. We've got the base feature, we've got the pad, we've got the pocket. Come into this pocket, we've got the sketch. Press the space bar on the sketch, you see that sketch there. And I'm going to click on the star, but if I press the space bar on the star, we're not going to see that sketch. So let's press the space bar again. And that's come down to the visible operation, the pocket. Press that. So we've highlighted the pocket and press the space bar. Now we can see the circle. Notice we've still got the star here, and though, well, it's invisible. This is the original sketch. So if I open up one of these, you can see the sketch, this one here, is still visible. We can highlight if we want. We can click on it, press the space bar and hide it. I'm not going to do it just yet. We'll do it later. So we have the circle here, and I'm going to use something called a subshape binder. So click on that sketch inside the star. The body which we just created is active. It's in bold, it's active, the star isn't. So this is involved, it's the active body. If I click on part design, create a sub object shape binder, or click on this shape binder here, it creates the shape binder. And that shape binder sits inside the body. This means that I can access this sketch from inside here by using the binder. If I try to pull in geometry from here, then it wouldn't work. It wouldn't allow me. Also, the good thing is that it saves me a bit of time because I obviously want this slightly smaller than the hole it's going to go into. So this is going to be a pad that comes out this way. So if I click on the binder and come down to the bottom, I see this offset, this offset here. Let's set this to minus 0.5 and hit enter. Notice what's happened. It's made it smaller inside here. This might be a bit too small. So the offset minus 0.5, let's go for 0.25. And there we have this circle that's been offset inwards. It's a face at the moment, that doesn't matter. But if we wanted to change that to make it an actual edge, then we can come up to this make face at the top of where the binder is, make face on the data tab, and set it from true to false. And click off. That is now an edge. It's just a standard circle. Anything happens to this sketch will be reflected in the binder. And because the binder has bound 
the sketch itself rather than an edge. If new edges get added, we got less chance of the topological naming issue affecting the binder because we've bound a whole object rather than an edge. So click the binder and that's create a pad. Now this will fail at first. So click the binder, use the pad. See it's failed. And that's because it's probably going in the wrong direction. It's probably coming out this way. Remember the solid part is over here. So it's behind. So we're going to go reverse and you see that's gone all the way through there and we can go and reduce this down to say, well, we want it to go through. I've got that set to two millimeters there. And you can juggle this if you want. We can select the face and pad up to the face, etc. I'm going to go for that. That's it. OK. So what we've done now is created this feature here. And if I come up to the star and come into the pocket and press the space bar, you can see that goes all the way through there. Remember, we're going to add finishings on later. So that's repeat the same process for the other one. So now, well, that's rename this. Let's try to rename it without spelling it something weird this time. Let's rename. And this is top tree section. We are missing a feature, which is obviously the section in here. We need to think about the connection in here. Now, this may be a bit big. So I've got this part here. It may be a bit big. I may need to bring this down a bit. So let's fix that now. So what I'm going to do is go right to the top. It's almost like I've planned this. And we're coming to the exploded sketch. We're coming to the sketch. One of these. These are all the same. They're all the same. Just pick one. Don't click on it. So we've got the original sketch back. And let's have a look. So we set some height in here and also we hid the constraints. So let's come down and look for those hidden constraints. And where are they? There they are. So it was one of these. It wasn't that one. There it is. 10 mil. Let's set this to five millimeters. So that's brought that down. Now, if we look down, this should have reset it all the way through because we used equality constraints across here which it has. That's closed that. And if by magic it has all conformed and we now got something a bit more better to work with. That's keep to this pad. So I've got that pad in there. Let's add the circle in here. So let's have a look. So let's click on this face here and create a sketch. So that's come in and we need a circle in here. We're still, these are in construction mode at the moment. So we've got nothing selected. That's toggle that. So you can see that's back to normal standard white geometry now. The blue is construction, toggle that back. And we're going to place a circle in here. Now I'm tempted to borrow the shape binder or make a constraint against it because this circle in here, which is well, it is the shape binder. It's going to be the same size. Or should we keep it simple? Because this is three millimeters. Let's keep it simple. We could create a connection between these, have a constraint in there that we can share between each of the parts. But let's keep it simple. Let's pull in this point and this point in here. Let's come in here and see if we can get it. And we can't get that. And the reason why is because the sketch is still showing. So you can see the white under here. This is the sketch underneath. If I'm clicking that, it's trying to find, because that sketch is sitting over the top of it, it's not being pulled in. So that's outside the body. I'm going to come over to the model and come up and look at that original sketch. Select it and press the space bar. Well, I can't do that because the geometry is still enabled. So right click or escape. Now we can select it. There we go and press the space bar. So now we can come in 
use the import geometry and come right into this corner that in that's come right in and bring that point in there we've got that there and as you can see the points come in circle place it on here hit escape get the mouse point back this point this point if we can select it there we go select those and this point symmetry constraint take the circle constrain the circle three mil enter so we've got that there so that's in there and i'm going to do something different this one's going to be pocketed in here we've extruded this one we're going to pocket this one so let's take that and that's come back over so let's close out of this now task and close that and we selected the sketch we'll create a pocket don't want it too deep let's go three millimeters inside that pocket and okay so we've got a three millimeter pocket there and we're going to repeat so now that top tree section that's hide that hide the star and we've got the next section and it's exactly the same we select the section create the body that gets pulled in as a base feature we take the base feature we extrude the base feature to five millimeters that's extruded now we can't see well we can't see this part at the moment so i'm going to select the upper body the pocket of that press the space bar so we can get to this now but we need the circle or the circle from this pocket of that top tree section so open it up find the sketch inside press the space bar we see the sketch there we take the sketch make sure it's selected our body that we've just created is active it's in bold that means we can use the sub shape binder against that so we've got a reference back to that sketch because now we've got the sub shape binder binder 001 inside this body i can come down and that's set make face to true let's leave that as true this time doesn't matter and we've got the offset let's set this to 0.25 before wasn't it and that's going the wrong way let's go minus 0.25 there we go that's gone inwards and if we think about where this sits this has got to be extruded into the pocket so the original pocket this sat on that face so if we bring back that pocket look up top tree section pocket 001 press the space bar and if we look in there you can see if i click on this one press the space bar that sub shape binder is sitting there so this has got to be extruded two ways this way and also this way to connect up with this body which is this pad 003 press the space bar on that there we go pull it back so in that case we click the binder and we hit pad and if we look well that's padded out this way and as you can see it's gone out this way and if we look it's actually gone from that face all the way through and out the other side so it's made a connection of this body so the body hasn't disappeared it's just moved if we bring this back it's going to be inside now it's going to be inside that body which is fine but i haven't got enough distance of this going this way because you can see it's just up to this face binder we have going to dimensions drop this down i've got two dimensions so we can actually do two dimension on that face binder there let's come up to the model and find the top tree section here this one if i hover over that you can see what's happened it's going into there i'm going to click on that and press the space bar and well that's way too far in there so let's come back to the tasks and reduce this second length and we'll come in and you can see 
That's one millimeter from that face binder. Let's go 1.5, click off. So that should sit inside nicely. And we can check that, click on the model. And we're looking at the top tree section above this body, the pocket. Press the space bar on that. So click it, press the space bar, bring it back and then hover over the bottom body. You can see how that's sitting in there. Let's click on this side, hover over that bottom body. That's sitting there like so. Top tree section, you can see that pocket in there. And if we wanted to click the top tree section, look at the view. And if we come down, we have some transparency. And we can bring this transparency up. And let's bring up to say 70. And you can see straight away, click off, how that is sitting inside there. Come back to the task because we still got the pad parameters open. And if you want to, we can bring this up a bit. 2.5, let's set it to 2. So that sits inside there. And I'm happy with that. Let's hit OK. So we've got our section already connected. Let's do the same on this side. So this is going to be the reverse. So this is going to be a section that's coming out this way. And it's the same new sketch on that face. Bring in the geometry, this point and this point in here, if I can get it. If you can't get it, then just take this edge, and get that point there. Circle within. And then hit escape this point and this point. If we can get it, we'll have to bring around this way a bit and click that one, click this one, place them centered and set this one. Diameter of three millimeters. Let's close that. Now we've got that there. We can come up after selecting the sketch and use the pocket. And we'll say three millimeter pocket and okay. Last part, this part here. Well, first of all, let's collapse that, click the body, right click and rename this body as bottom tree section. Quite repetitive, but it's the same workflow each time. So take that sketch. Let's look at the data. Make sure we got that there. Now, before I start this, should I take this part and make it transparent? Yeah, let's do that. So click on the bottom tree section, the body, view, transparency, and set that to 70. So we can see for it. And we can see that void there. Take our last sketch, this one here and select the body. That pulls it in as a base feature. Take the base feature and create the pad. If you wanted to, you could create this slightly bigger. I'm just gonna keep to five mil and okay that. So we've got that there. Locate the sketch for this pocket in the previous body. So open that up, look down, it's the pocket, and inside that pocket there will be a sketch, this sketch here. Press the space bar so we can see it. It's sitting there, and then take that sketch, our new body is active, and create a subshape binder. So you can see that subshape binder is in there. Now let's come down, because everything's transparent, I can work on that binder without hiding everything. Let's come over to the data tab, click the binder, come over to the data tab and come down to the offset, which is minus 0 0.25 to offset it inwards. And we'll take the binder, click the binder, use the pad. Everything has moved. So that's position ourselves. It's going to be two dimensions, reduce the second length, 
So it comes in and sits inside that void. Second length, two millimeters. And then reduce this length so it comes in and sits, well, inside this body. Which is basically one millimeter, that's fine. And OK. So now we've got this all connected up. I can do some additional adjustments on here. So I'm going to come in and work on the individual bodies. So let's take this one and rename it. Right click, rename pot section. OK, so now we've got that. We could say come into these individual sections and well, we could add some embellishments on here. So Let's start the top tree section. Let's come into here and what we'll do, double click to make it bold. This is now the active body. And I'm going to select this face and create a sketch upon here. And we could add, say, some circles on here for bubbles. So one there, and I say one down here. Move that up, make those equal. I'm not going to constrain these, I'm just going to place them. Hit close, and we could pad those. So those are padded up that way. And we'll set those to one mil, see what it looks like, something like that. Or we could wait till we actually get to that's come down and delete that. So let's take that sketch and delete that. We could actually wait till we mirror this. So then we can place them a bit differently each side. Otherwise we're gonna get a mirrored version. One thing I'm going to do though, is that that top tree section is being selected. I'm gonna come in and take this edge, this one here, and make a fillet against that. Let's fillet that edge. And we'll fill it that by something like, let's go, it's five millimeters, it's gonna look odd. We can always change it, that's okay that. Five millimeters on the fillet there. And I might put a little fillet at the top as well. I don't know, that's come in here, let's place a little fillet on here as well. This one here, I want to be careful this hole. So not fit, we'll fit this pad here. A little bit of a filleting on there. You can see it's filleting and affecting that pad. So we'll set this to 0 0.5. Something like that. Okay, that. Now we want this body. So this one here. If I double click, I go back to the body. So let me show you that again. Selected from the screen, it selects the last operation. Double click, it goes to the body itself. Double click again, it goes back to the pocket. So take this body, double click it, and it becomes active. So that's highlighted in bold. And that's add. So this one here, let's make sure we get that edge. Fillet that. And we'll set the fillet to five. Like we did before. Yeah, I set it a bit more. So bring this around. May look a bit weird with this one, but we can change that. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Might reduce this fillet in a bit here. That's okay that. And I want a different fillet on this edge. Otherwise, I will just let both of them fillet on that one. And let's set that to five. That'll do us. Let's OK that. And this here, I think I'm going to keep as is. So it's a nice change. So I've got something that's unfilleted at the top and bottom and something that's filleted in the middle. Let's save this and call it tree. And now, I just flip myself around the wrong way there we can start mirroring this. So we've got 
the star, the top tree section, the bottom tree section, and the pot. I start with the star, and open that up. It hasn't got many operations, so look through, we can see there's not many operations in there. But what we need to do is mirror the operation. So we don't mirror the base feature. We don't mirror the last feature. If I try to mirror the last feature using the mirror or part design, apply a pattern and mirrored, then it's saying select only one feature in the active body. Selection is not in active body. So first of all, well, we can see the star is not active. Let's try that again. Double click the star, click the pocket, part design, apply a pattern, mirrored, this will fail. As you can see, well, nothing's happening. And if I change the axis, well, you can see nothing's happening. That's because, let's cancel that, we've got to pick all the operations. So that's the pad and the pocket, not the base feature, because the base feature was the sketch. Pad, control click the pocket, and then use the mirror. I use it from the toolbar this time. See how it's mirrored, it's mirrored on the other side. That means the axis it's mirroring over is wrong. Come down, we're looking at the base X, Y. So it's mirrored it over the X, Y axis, which is, we look, is this one. So it's gone from here and flipped it over here. Change this, base Y, Z, and we can see it's mirrored over the right axis now. And we've got the feature as well that's pulled through. Okay, that, and that's done now. If we wanted to, we can get rid of this line inside by making it refined. And that's just by coming into the mirror where it says refine and set that to true and click off. That will take away that line there. Let's do the same for this one. So this one here, we can see the fillet selected, double click, see the top tree section, double click that. That is now bold. That's the active body. We've got a few more operations. We've got the pad, we've got the binder, we've got the pad two. We don't want the binder, so we don't want any sketches or binders, etc. So we want the pad, the pad zero two, we want the pocket, we want the fillet, and we want the last fillet. So all those use a mirrored. This will mirror it across this axis, so you can see that's mirroring correctly, but we want it along the YZ like so okay and if you wanted to we can get rid of this line inside with again the refine and set that to true if we wanted to take this one so this is the bottom tree section double click the tree view to make it active and pick out the action so base feature is not action pad is binder is not pad 004 is Pocket 002, that's collapsed that, so we don't get the sketch in there and confuse us. The fillet is an action, and this fillet's the action. Again, mirrored. Looking around to make sure it's taken. No, it's round the wrong way, and we set this to the correct plane, the YZ plane. So mirrored across the YZ plane, and you can see that's come across the YZ plane there, and we're all good and okay that. So now we've got, I've got one more, this one here, the pot section, double click that. All the same routine mirrored and cancel that. Let's first select the features. So we want pad 005, I want the binder, pad 006, not many there. Mirrored across the YZ plane and okay. So we've got all those in there. And we can now decide on any elements that we want to add. For instance, I may want to add some baubles in here. I'm going to stick with the simple tree. And that's basically how to create the model itself. Now, the thing is, if I wanted to 3D print this, I could use an assembly workbench to put this all together, but I don't need to because we've got it all in the right place. But I need to export out all of these parts. So to do that, I am literally going to select 
I'm not select the top operation, that body there. I'm going to select the last operation in here. And then come in, select this mirror, and then this mirror here, and the pot. So I'm showing all those. And we'll select each of those. Control select each of them. We could do it from the screen actually by selecting them from the screen. File, export, and I can export it as whatever file format here. I'm going to go for step, so step file, and then save that off, and then hit OK. So we've got a step file of all those parts. Now let's bring that back in. So let's shrink these down and select them all. Just select those all and press the space bar. That's hidden now. File, import, and let's drop this down and find step file in here. And there's the tree. And there's the step file. And inside there is all those sections that have been mirrored out. So we can take that over to your slicer import that in and print that off. We can export SSTL the same way as well if we wanted to. So that's how to create a Christmas tree with a compound workflow and using the, the subshape binder to create these connection points, some mirroring in there, some filleting, and ways of using the part workbench combined with the part design workbench. Just to get that sketch, that very first sketch, which was this sketch here. Let's hide the STL. To take that sketch as a master sketch and create the individual sketches, let's click on that sketch, press the spacebar, the individual sketches via compound workflow. One single sketch, explode those, and then use those as we look at the star as the base feature, this base feature here. And if I hide each of these sketches, click on them, and I've shown this base feature, I'm going to show the star, and that base feature, though we've got this one here, which I'm going to press the spacebar on to hide that, that base feature is, if we look, sketch child zero, sketch zero, so you can see sketch underscore child zero, bracket sketch zero, and that's that there. So I hope that was of interest. A bit of a long tutorial, but it shows you how to create something that we can print in place quite easily from a single sketch. And I forgot to add a hole in here to hang it up, but that should make basically a flexible print in place ornament for your tree. And I hope you found that of interest. And I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.